At work, what's a red flag that only the people who are lowest on the totem pole are likely to notice? Missing payday. If you get paid on Wednesday and Friday comes without pay, don't bother coming in on Monday. Friday payday. No pay come end of day on Monday. Walk out. No other reason you're there. You work for pay. Whenever we got a cheap gift or some new perk from corporate congratulating us on increased profits for the year, it was pretty much a guarantee that a month later we'd be told that there would be no bonus. Thanks. I can't wait to pay rent with this coffee mug full of pre-dried out ballpoint pens. Was once told by the cleaner, this place is fricked. I used to change the toilet rolls and the bogs twice a day. Now it's barely twice a week. They're either crapping less, or we're getting less clients through the door. She was absolutely correct. Place got extremely downsized within 6 months of that. This applies more to the tech industry, but when the CEO calls a meeting out of the blue and says they have plenty of funding, start interviewing. Should have done this at my last insurance gig. They suddenly brought us all in and told us we were all secure in our jobs despite a recent turnaround in the market. One guy in my department started looking immediately. He left shortly thereafter. Two weeks after he left, they told everybody we were getting canned in four months. Late pay. I've heard a few stories from people who have been paid late and stayed instead of looking for a new job, then later being made redundant. If the cash flow is so bad payroll is coming late, it's time to get out of there. Requests for personal time off are ignored or denied. Likewise, requests for specific vacation days go unaddressed or become postponed. I'm leaving my current job in big part because of this exact thing. Once I got married, requested some time off for it, and was told to come in. Yeah right. Efficiency experts are brought in to sit with employees and observe their daily tasks. Never a good sign. A drastic cut in your hours for those who work hourly service jobs. If you go from 5 shifts to 3, then down to 1 or 2, you're going to be let go. They are either waiting for you to get fed up with the hours and quit, or you're about to be fired. Cleaning workers are usually bottom rung, but they'll notice failing health standards before anyone else. And paid bills. As bottom of the totem in a financial department for a small non-profit, I was the one putting bills into the system and then would print checks and mail them out when the higher ups said to. When I first started almost every bill was behind. They covered it up by claiming the person I was replacing hadn't been able to keep up with the workload and that was why everything was late. I spent over half my time on the phones talking companies into not shutting down our utilities. Maybe the last person was that slow, but it was not that much. Full time work, yes, but too much, dog trash. Fortunately the right man had come in as CEO just before me, and he literally saved the company from collapse. I just happened to see what should have been the end of the company. He was smart though. No bills were paid until employees had been paid, and no bills but critical ones were paid at all. Then he paid massive portions of debts off quickly to put us back in acceptable standing as we worked out payment plans. That man saved a small company with a million dollar sign deficit in under a year. I work in a different department now, but its annual profit now is around 2 mil. Every boss I've had from the military to retail sales, who says, I'm not here to be liked, has been incompetent. It's true you are not there to be friends with everyone, but if you have no people skills, you can't manage people. There's a big difference between a boss who says they aren't there to be liked versus a boss who isn't there to be friends. It's tough to be someone's friend and boss. Equipment falling into disrepair, OSHA standards being ignored, workers being asked to lie about injuries. OSHA standards being ignored, workers being asked to lie about injuries, can confirm. Got fired shortly after I got injured on the job and found out my employer didn't have workers comp insurance. I've seen two companies go down the tubes. In both cases, the first sign was removing unnecessary telephones. Where workers shared an office, the private lines were replaced by a shared line. When things got worse yet, one shop removed the doors from bathroom stalls, to discourage lingering. 
This may only apply to retail and food service, but price hikes. If prices are increasing abnormally and quality is stagnant, then either one, the company is losing money or two, the company is getting greedy and starting to bite off more than they can chew. Upper management can increase a product's cost by two or three dollars and not bat an eye. All they see is profit margins. However, the lower down, hourly wage employees have to deal with angry customers and pressure from corporate if sales begin to drop. Look for any changes in benefits or amenities, like if all of a sudden they cancel the coffee service, or if they normally have free meals or something they stop providing them. If you ever get asked to list what you do on a daily basis or to document difficult tasks that only you perform beware. We need a summary of everything you do to be written in a procedural manual, equals you're about to be replaced by some college intern. The top guy seeing everyone else as the help. I work for a company where the corporate office is probably like 25 people. On my first day I was in the break room by myself and then the guy that hired me and the owner walk in and the owner goes to the coffee pot. The guy that hired me said hey Jim, this is VTL89, the newest member of our team. Owner doesn't even turn and look at me just goes oh, and puts a lid on his coffee and walks out without even looking my way. I lost a ton of respect for him and the company that day, especially after my interview two days prior they were talking up how much they care about their employees. Bosses who take responsibility for nothing. I had a boss regularly tell me how to do something incorrectly. Her boss would correct her, then she would punish me for doing it wrong. For doing exactly what she told me to do. She'd do things like spill a coffee all over a co-worker's super important documents then not apologize or admit it was her fault. Or even an accident she was responsible for. No, she blamed a step stool that was on the floor next to her that wasn't even in the way of her. Sitting down. Or the counter. Co-worker was crying while I was trying to rescue the papers and boss spent the whole time being a bee about the step stool because she was too embarrassed and immature and disrespectful to own up to it. The indifference of people in top positions. They're the ones who let make workplaces turn crummy. IT admin. Shutting off access accounts when layoffs are happening. When our CIO got laid off I heard the admin who got the orders had his finger tighten and double triple check the order. Likely he knew before any of the CIO's direct reports in the vast majority of the company. As someone who used to be busy most of the time, the fact that I found myself stretching 30 hours of work into 40 all of a sudden was the first sign of bad times soon. Shortly after that started our boss announced that there was a cash flow problem due to a combination of factors. Less work, clients not paying, projects not progressing thus not being able to bill hours etc. I started looking for work immediately. Have had some interest but nothing concrete yet. The first person got let go last week. A recent hire. I doubt I'm next. But you never know. When you all get the speech that you need to give 110% to the job and be a team player willing to take on more roles. On the surface this does not seem bad. But what my experience taught me it translates out to is. We've let people go. We are not rehiring. We expect all of you to take on those other jobs too with no additional pay. And if they start playing funny games with breaks, lunch hours and overtime or demanding work after you've clocked out it is time to GTFO. At my husband's large Fortune 50 company they were laying off several dozen people each quarter starting in 2009. Your department would get an email to meet at an off-site conference facility Friday morning. From there those being let go would be handed a box with your personal stuff. A brown bagged lunch, a packet with your severance info in exchange for signing a corporate waiver and handing in your badge. You didn't get to clean out your office, say goodbye, finish your work, you were just gone. This went on for nearly 3 years, terrible way to live, he managed to make it to retirement but to this day he can't look at a brown bag lunch. That's cold AF. When paychecks bounce. The amazing thing about that job was the checks cleared. When passing down the hall, people who ignore your good morning unless they need something from you, or you're higher up. This is a major red flag, and to anyone lowest on the hierarchy it's crystal clear. Worsening conditions in the back room. The more stuff that gets backstocked, the more full the back room gets, which makes it harder to keep it organized, which makes it harder to find what you need to send to the sales floor, which means less product on the sales floor, which means fewer sales. 
Fewer sales leads to less profits leads to fewer hours for the low level employees leads to the backroom getting worse. Retail logistics is a vicious cycle if you let it be. The way the bosses or owners treat their staff is very indicative of the work environment. Lowest man on the totem pole will often catch the most crap. How the bosses deliver that crap says a lot. Cleaners see everything. Late bill payments on desks. Employees cheating on their spouse. Empty liquor bottles placed in envelopes in the trash. I've been a cleaner for 15 years and I've seen literally everything. Also cleaners tend to be really chill so people tell them things. Find out the employee turnover rate, especially if it's a small company. I worked at a place that started out great, seemed to have great pay and benefits but had more and more problems with management. Then I started finding out that our 5 person office had 11 people quit or been fired over the past year. A major red flag, I stayed and put up with their crap much longer than I should have. A hiring freeze and mandatory overtime raises a few eyebrows. The second a job tells me I have mandatory overtime, if I'm salaried, not hourly, is the second I quit without notice. I'm a tech writer, which means I sometimes get to be effectively the first user of a new application. As I'm writing the manual for it, you can always tell where the company has saved cash, usually on UI UX design and UI copy. I'm fairly technical, a bit of front-end coding skill, basic familiarity with a range of tech, Jack of all trades, so if I am struggling to work out how to do stuff in your UI, I kinda assume customers will. I came into the shop I worked in one day and all the sales assistants were taping the ratty old carpet down. Weird, I thought, then the fire escape door didn't close so we started locking it with two bike locks. Odd, I think. Then I got told not to order in some of our more expensive stock during a very busy time of year. One night as I was closing up I saw my boss leaving in a much nicer car than he used to have dart our frick. We're closing down. And I was right. Mice. Workers will notice mice before management even knows or really cares. Unless your bosses are cats. This is a really insightful question. In restaurants, as a server, if the kitchen is in a bad mood, you know you are fricked for the shift. Usually it means the manager is on a rampage. Bad management and poor leadership at the top, because you have to do the work on the ground to implement their vision. Crap flows to the bottom. When you are discreetly contacted by law enforcement agencies asking questions about your employer and place of work. Water damage and termites will start affecting the lowest part of a totem pole first. Wood sculptures should installed into higher ground so water flows away from the base during rain. Also totems don't usually feature flags, so a red flag is a red flag. Story 1. My daughter's first job out of college last year was working for a small internet marketing company. Her entire department was given an unexpected furlough during the last two weeks of December and I told her to start looking. She got a layoff notice after Christmas via the instant messaging platform they used. Classy. She now works for a much better company. Story 2. One of our favorite restaurants, locally owned, stopped taking credit and debit cards. Their machine was broken. This was before the rise in popularity of services like Venmo and Apple Pay. They would occasionally have their phone disconnected. They have been out of business for a few years now. If your company gives you a phone, get ready to be harassed. Constantly. That phone is code for we expect you to be available 24 stroke 7 so your direct supervisor doesn't have to be, until you need them, then it becomes voicemail leaving device. My dad worked 45 years for Sears Canada, we saw the flags a mile away, when they start selling assets and giving big bonuses. I realize this doesn't count. But civilians may find this interesting. In the Navy, United States, it's a well-known and, at least it was in my ship, oftentimes true fact that if out of nowhere the ship's galley, kitchen, serves steak and lobster, there is bad news coming from the captain. Usually in the form of you're going on an unexpected deployment, your deployment's being extended, or something along those lines. It happened to us multiple times as to where we hated seeing that on the menu and after dinner like clockwork the captain hit us with the bad news. Jello hashtag feature me. 